Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to make onomakiyaki. Okonomiyaki? Okonomiyaki. Okonomiyaki. And so what you're going to need is a mixing bowl. And listen, this is a recipe that has no rules, okay? Some people call it the Japanese pancake, some call it the Japanese pizza, so you've got options, there's flexibility. So, what you need is some plain flour. I'm gonna add that into my mixing bowl, okay? I've got just a bit over a cup, but we'll see how it all goes, um, depending if I might need to add some more. Now, I'm gonna use three eggs, okay? Three whole eggs, in like so. Oh, I got some shell. If you ever get some shell in your bowl, use these to scoop it out, rookie. Okay, so now that I've got my eggs in, what I'm gonna do is I've got about a cup and a half of chopped cabbage. So I've shredded it and then just made it a little bit thinner because you don't want it too thick, all right? Now, I don't know what we're calling them today, but I'm gonna call these spring onions today, but you may know them as shallots. So, we're gonna really thinly slice them. And then add it in like so. Now, what I'm gonna do is, using my spoon, is gonna just start mixing it all in. Now, because this is Asian-ish, I would use dashi. Now, I don't have dashi, and I can't get it from my local supermarket. So, I'm using chicken stock instead. So, you just wanna add roughly about half a cup of chicken stock. And just for a bit more saltiness, I'm going to add some soy sauce and I'm looking at about a tablespoon. All right, great. This is at a great batter consistency. So I've got a non-stick fry pan, but I'm gonna add about quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. Now you can use any oil that you like as long as it doesn't have too much flavor. Now just make sure when you're cooking this that the oil isn't too hot because you don't want to cook it too much on the outside and then it's all battery and oh, oh, in the middle, okay? So add a heaped spoon of it into the center. Okay, so it's like a little light fry. And we're trying to make the best that you can of a circle. Okay, now resist the temptation, but do not squish it down in the pan. You want it nice, light and fluffy. Now, what I've got here is some whole raw prawns, okay, that have been deveined and shelled. Now I'm just gonna place it while it's still cooking into the batter, all right? Now you can use any protein and you could add it into the mix if you like. I've used like leftover chicken or bacon. That's a really good one because anything with bacon tastes really good. Okay, so that's been cooking for about like seven to eight minutes now on, on a low heat because we, like I said, we don't want it to be battery on the inside. One, two, three. Nice. All right, look at that. Beautiful. Once again, do not be pressing it down. It's not an ironing board. It's an okonami, okonamiyaki. Okonami, okonamiyaki. All right, so we are ready to serve this up. Just gonna get it and then, oh yum. Look at that, can you check that out? Look at those golden crispy prawns, cooked right through. All right, to serve. Now, traditionally they do like this amazing Japanese sauce, but who got time for that? I don't. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use barbecue sauce first and just quickly just go along like a really nice thin line like so. Oh yum. And then across the other way. And like this is definitely Asian-ish. This is not what you'd get traditionally. And now, kupi, my favorite type of mayonnaise, okay? Doing the same thing, different direction. Oh, yum! Look at that, so delicious. Okay, now what we're gonna do, just some finishing little touches, and that is some spring onions. I've just used one for garnish. Okay, also this is sliced pickled ginger. Great with sushi, but also great with this dish. I'm not gonna say it again, because I'm just butchering it, okay? All right, now I'm putting it all around. Some people could include this into the batter, but I like it a bit more crispy and cold for that little bit more contrast, but great texture, okay? Now, what I've done is I've got uh, some nori sheets, cut them up really, like about that size, and then just using normal kitchen scissors, 
just cutting it to get some beautiful little julienne strips. Okay, like this. I'm gonna let it come down like that. Yum. And now, my favorite part. These are bonito flakes. Now, if you can't get bonito flakes, totally fine. You don't necessarily need to have it. I'm gonna put it on top of it and look at this. Yum. Look, it's moving. Can you see that? Look, it's moving. It's alive. Don't worry, the fish is definitely dead. It's not, yeah, it's dead. Okay, but this is an amazing dish and it's just using kitchen staples at home, okay? Even leftovers. All right, come here, you have to have, you have, to have a try. Give it a go. Is it yum? Mm -hmm. Good. Enjoy.